Well, hello Rovers. Today's project is all about roosting bars and nesting boxes because we have the hens more or less looked after at this point. Everything's pretty good about their yard. They have protection, they have water, they have food, but roosting bars are a place for them to sleep at night and nesting boxes are where they lay their eggs. So they're not ready to lay eggs yet, but they're not far away from it either. So anyway, a lot to do, time to crack on. So this is what we're building right now. These are supports that will attach to the framework inside the hen house and their job is to support the roosting bars. This will all make a lot more sense in a minute. Now I'm using just scrap wood here. This is the type of wood that uh, lifts of lumber are commonly stacked on and they, they just throw it away. So first thing I want to do is make a little line two and a half inches in from the edge. And we'll just put that on the edge of my board as though the stud were running here. Now, this support will go up like that. Fine. And then I've cut these little bits of plywood. These were from a, an old project and I, they were left over. I've hung on to them in a good thing too because these make perfect gussets. So they will go on here like this. I'll grab some screws. I'll put my hearing protection on. Now I'll just drill some pilot holes. Square everything up. Great. So now we have two of these. That's what we need. And we need a couple of straps for the end. And I have a piece of scrap wood for that. I'll cut it on the chop saw. Well, I'm inside the chicken house and the roosting bars are going on the end that's opposite from the door. So first thing I need to build this out a little bit right here. So we have something solid to let the branches, and that's what we're going to use, just tree branches as the roosting bars. Very, very natural. Okay, I just installed these supports. And if we look across them, we should see that they line up pretty well. Now it's a matter of going to the forest and getting some branches and laying the branches across. Uh, the height that these are, that's about 24 inches off the floor. Well, this is a win-win situation because this tree is at the edge of where the new driveway will be put in. So I have to remove the branches anyway. So I've arranged these branches in what I think is a pretty decent pattern. And this big thick one on the end, I've already secured it with a screw. And another screw on that end. Uh, these other ones, I'm going to see if I can secure them with screws and if not, I'll use cable ties to assist me.
Well, the hens seemed to enjoy it. Even though they had never seen one before they got here, they instinctively knew that's where they should sleep. So I'm working on the nest boxes now. Now, I picked up these little mini barrels, oh, about a year ago from a local brewery, a microbrewery. And they're food safe. They say bovine clear A3. Have no idea what that is, but it says for use in food, store cool. And also it's uh, Food Council of Europe halal safe. So I'm thinking these will be pretty safe. What I've done is I've already cut the top off this one. I've washed it out with uh, dish soap and it smells nice and clean. And this is the way the nest box will be uh, orientated so that I'll secure it to the floor the hen will leap over this little bit here and nest in here and lay her eggs. Anyway, that's one. I'm going to make the mirror image with this one. So I've taken a sharpie and I've marked out the lines I want to cut. It's a pretty pleasing shape. And now I'm going to use a jigsaw to cut this. Now, I'm doing this on the ground so I can use my knees to help hold it and steady it. Uh, the jigsaw is a very safe tool, but you do have to do a plunge cut. A plunge cut means that you'll start the saw like this and slowly move it in and let the uh, blade cut a slot. And then you can go ahead and follow the line. You do want to be careful doing that plunge cut. You want to be steady. Uh, you don't want the, the blade to bounce from side to side and possibly jump out. Anyway, let's get on with this. So now we're in. Now it's just a matter of following the... There we go. Same shape as the other one, only this one is the mirror image so that it can go against the opposite wall. Now uh, it's a bunch of salt water in the bottom there, so I'm going to clean that out. Now I should be using uh, straw for this, but I don't have any, but I do have all these wood shavings, so this will have to suffice until uh, we get some straw. Looks and it smells divine in there. Okay, so today's project is to make a feeder for the chickens because those little feeders that we've been using they're meant for chicks uh, and you know they're just going through two of those a day so I'm making a big industrial scale one for them and it's just a bucket a 20 liter bucket and I bought this little tray at the dollar store um, anyway it would be better to have one with edges that are a little bit higher but this was I mean, the shelves are bare in the dollar store, if you can imagine. So this is what we have to work with. I'm putting down a couple of little pieces of wood here, and that's going to be the base for this. It'll sit on there. I'll drill some holes in the side and mount it on here. So anyway, let's get on with it. Those hens are getting hungry. Okay, so I'm using a one inch hole saw to make a series of holes around the bottom of the bucket and I'm going to cut this. 
Now it's all right to cut through the bottom. In fact, that's part of the plan. So that now I'll use a saw to cut the rest of that out. Okay, so I'm just going to use a jigsaw to finish these holes off. Be careful. Just that easy. Then finish the other holes off the very same way. So now we're going to secure the bottom to the bucket and we're just using these <laughs> we're just using these uh, screws which we use for the roofing and I'm making sure that the drill bit is much larger than the screw itself that way we'll have good clearance around that plastic the red plastic which is quite brittle so we don't want to really uh, push up against that with any of our fasteners okay so we have filled it up with food and we have a little bit coming out of our holes that's our design and now we're going to put a lid on it. And why do we put a lid on it? Well, because if we don't, uh, it's quite likely the chickens will jump up and right into it. And that's not good. Well, anytime we enter the yard, the chickens come about us right away. They're not the least bit scared or intimidated. And in no time flat, they've got this feeder figured out. And there's plenty of room for everyone. The last project this week is a ramp to help the chickens get up and down. So I'm using a two by six. This was left over from our concrete forms last year. And we had some scrap one by four, and I just ripped those into little strips, about a half inch uh, wide. And I'm stapling those on to the two by six very straightforward using a 2x4 as a gauge. night. Now remember the best way you can help Rovers rest is by sharing these videos on your social media. So until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>